Ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking forward to Halo 5 Guardians, well, you don't have that much longer to wait. October the 27th is the day that millions of Xbox gamers are going to be very happy campers. The developers, 343, have actually taken to the official Xbox uh, blog and have decided to discuss some of the technologies that we're going to be finding within the Epic. And there is actually some really cool stuff to be found. So, I guess the first thing that we're going to have to discuss is the resolution. So, resolution, of course, has been a big deal for many. And resolution and frame rate are intricately linked, as many people know. The developers are not wanting to settle for anything less than 60 frames per second. And so to do this, they are going to be utilizing dynamic resolution. What this effectively means is that the game will scale the resolution based on just what's happening, the workload for the rest of the system. Now this actually works rather smartly because let's just for the sake of argument say so you're walking along and there's a massive vista and not much is happening on screen so it's just kind of a visual feast. You've got like you know a nice skybox, maybe a nice wide view of a valley and it looks nice but there's not much that's really punishing the system well in which case it's going to be running a full 1080p on the other hand let's say that you're trying to nuke like a thousand enemies from orbit then obviously the system is doing considerably more work therefore in which case the system will reduce the resolution let's just say for the sake of argument to 900p so that your um gameplay will still remain smooth while at the same time, because obviously you're dealing with so many enemies, you might not notice that the resolution's dipped a little bit. Dynamic resolution is not particularly new. A lot of games have done this in the past, but this is the first time that we're really seeing the implementation, at least in such a full retail release of Halo. Previously, the beta had featured some dynamic resolution, but this is confirmation that the final retail release will indeed feature it. Now, I actually am quite a big fan of this because consoles do have finite resources as everyone's aware so I think that this is the best compromise between visual fidelity and making sure that the frame rate is nice and stable because obviously there are some situations where you just don't want that frame rate to dip. More on that, the, vi the visuals for the game are going to be taking a considerable leap forward. And in fact, if you've been looking at the uh, screenshots of Halo 5 or you've tried out the beta, you'll know that there is some definite differences. For one, they're going to be implementing a physically based rendering system. What does that mean? Well, it means that we're going to get much better lighting models, much better materials in game. What this basically means is the materials will react according to how light strikes them. It's going to make things look better. So, for example, um, if you're on an alien moon and the light starts to come at certain angles or maybe it's tinted a certain colour, your suit will definitely look and tape and feel like it's actually within that environment rather than it just being kind of a generic colouring. It's going to be more, it's going to be more plausible in appearance. It's more going to be more plausible in behaviour, and that's how light should be. We're starting to move towards physically based light, uh, physically based rendering systems right now, anyway, and I think it's really good that 343 are doing this. Moreover, they've also confirmed that the cloud is going to be a thing. They okay? say so that they've re basically have remade their entire thinking, they've restructured their entire thinking when it comes to uh, online services. They are embracing dedicated servers and this is going to be used for either co-op campaigns and of course multiplayer experiences as a whole including custom games. They've re-architected their um, game systems, services and networking to take advantage of Xbox Live Cloud Compute and this cloud computing will be utilized for a number of different things including physics and artificial intelligence in both the war zone and cam uh, campaign co-op. Now what they're basically hoping is that they can not only leverage the performance of your local console so whether that be for um, you know, artificial intelligence or whether that's for the actual reg regular game logic but they're also going to be using Xbox Live Cloud to push Halo and make it a grandiose scale to make it better gameplay I guess you could say and to really start to push that into a uh, wider scale 
In fact, the developers said, and I quote, We wanted to give players the opportunity to explore and discover new items such as collectibles and hidden power weapons in between combat moments. The additional Spartan abilities such as charge, ground power, clamor, and tracking that you conceal all these things. They want to have a giant battles amidst large scale destruction to quieter moments spent in exploring ruins of alien civilizations. Building of those exp solid experiences brings out unique challenges, particularly with commitments to 60 frames per second. Additionally, while those comments were from Justin Dings, who is the campaign environment art lead, we also heard from Chris Halluk, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, he's the campaign lean designer. What he is saying is that they want player choice to be part of the Halo campaign. In fact, they want it to be a bigger part of the Halo campaign, and they want to start expanding that with Halo 5. I've got to say, I'm really excited about this, because I'm not a massive competitive Halo player. I, I play it occasionally online for fun, but I suck, to be honest. I don't really like... Uh, FPS on pad as regular viewers will know but I really really love the Halo universe I, it's like even the music is just bloody awesome in Halo it's like the second you hear that theme tune you're like oh my god I need to go and I remember there's some distinct moments in Halo like um, I played the original Halo on a PC because I didn't own an Xbox at the time and then when Halo 2 was coming out I was like you know what oh wow um, I kind of saw it and I eventually got myself an Xbox and I got to play Halo 2 and I was, I was just, I was so happy. There were some moments in Halo 2 that were just incredible. Anyhow, I'm getting well off the beaten track. So I'm really looking forward to some of these changes. What they want to do is they want to make it so that you can say, hey, you know what, I want to go on a vehicle and someone else could say, you know, I don't actually want to do that. I want to tackle the, the whole mission on foot. So screw the vehicle, I'm just going to leave it where it was. They want to push you to start exploring the landscape. Now, obviously, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have an experience that's as massive as, let's say, Far Cry 4 in terms of, you know, the, the huge environments. But it does mean it's going to be more of a sandbox and less of a linear corridor experience, which isn't necessarily bad. I actually, you know, quite like it corridor experiences at times. I think it can work rather well for example Gears of War and Halo have demonstrated this but I, I'm really excited about this new direction and I have to confess that I like the fact that they're expanding player choices because that to me I think is kind of like the thing for the next generation consoles they're going to be having much better artificial intelligence they want to increase the number of artificial intelligences that are running at the same time and this is going to be utilized for um, the increased player count as well. And I just think this is really cool. Most of this is going to be down to the fire team artificial intelligence. And obviously, with AI, it can be really dodgy. And by which I mean, it's like if you've ever played early fighting games, you'll know exactly what I mean, where effectively it's not really so much smart, it just pretty much is cheating by reading your movements and that was kind of the thing, even with old school uh, FPSs back in the day. So I think we're starting to move towards that, and I, I really like it. I really like the develop. I really like the way they're going forward with this. We will, of course, be doing a full analysis of this game when it comes out. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I must say, they are designing the game with co-op in mind. Now, obviously, I've not played the campaign, so I don't know how this is going to work in reality. But what I'm hoping is that it's not going to necessarily be punishing you for single player. Like, let's say you don't want to play with your body, uh, buddy Tom, then I would prefer for you to just be able to focus similarly on just single player. But I think this is really cool stuff, and I personally am really looking forward to playing the game. Definitely one of the games I'm looking forward to most in 2015, if you can't tell. God, this is going to be a good year for... It has been a good year for games, hasn't it? I mean, jeez, there's so many awesome games out this year. Absolutely ridiculous. I'm really enjoying Until Dawn, actually, on the PS4. We're going to be uh, continuing that, Amata and I. And you've got Metal Gear Solid, which is bloody awesome. You've had The Witcher. And God knows what other games are going to be... Um, what other games we're going to be enjoying. I mean, we've got Call of Duty Black Ops 3, which is looking quite nice. Which lands the month after Halo, if memory serves. You've got Assassin's Creed Syndicate, 
It's absolutely insanity. There's so much cool stuff. I mean, Assassin's Creed Syndicate comes out, I think, pretty much, yeah, the 23rd, and then you've got Halo 5 Guardians on the 27th. It's going to be an absolute mad couple of months. So, you know, we're getting into full swing right now on Fallout 4 on the 10th. It's going to be a very good year, folks. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Let me know what games you're looking forward to this year. I think, this, I, think I can pretty much guarantee most of the comments are going to say Halo 5, Fallout 4, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Starcraft 2, Star Wars Battlefront. Pretty sweet, right? Anyway, I don't know why I'm in a pretty jovial mood today. It's just been one of those days where, like, you know, busy day, come home, collapse in chair, and then you feel like in a really good mood because you're like, oh, day of, day of uh, work is done. Anyway, I'm going to get going. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, the normal like, favorite, comment, blah, blah, blah would be appreciated. Take care. Bye for now.